Welcome to track number five of Apocalypse. Chapter 14, Apocalyptic Revelations number 14. And I looked and a lamb stood on the Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as from the voice of um, many waters and the voice of a great thunder. I heard the voice of harpers. And they sang a new song before the throne, four beasts and the elders. No man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. And they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth, these are they which were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the eternal gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. And to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Father God, fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and and worship Him that made heaven and earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. And there followed an angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the, angel, the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive the mark, forgive this mark, in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from hence for the say of the Spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. And I looked And behold, a white cloud, and upon the clouds stood one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice, All right, saying, Thrust thy sickle and reap, for the time is come to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came from the altar, which had power over fire. And crowd with a loud cry unto him that had a sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles. By the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Amen. Amen. All right. Good. Are you blessed? Yes. Right. Now, there are just a couple of ap- apocalyptic insights I need you to catch here. Amen. The first of them is that a lamb stood. I looked, chapter 14, verse 1. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we ask you to guide us by your holy presence. In Jesus' name. Amen. It says, I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion. Amen. And with him, 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Amen. Now, Jesus Christ is depicted as a lamb, not a cobra. All right? All right? And think about it. He's not depicted as a, even as a lion or some kind of wild animal. It's depicted as a lamb, humble, dependent, not a goat, humble, dependent. You know, this is a very important characteristic of, of what? Of Jesus, whom we are following. A lamb, a lamb, humble, a lamb of God, the lamb of God, not the, the snake of God. Not the cobra of God. Not the tiger of God. 
not the leopard of God, not the kangaroo of God, not the giraffe of God, the lamb of God. Humble. What is a lamb? Dependent. Dependent. And nothing. That is, these two words describe, I will recommend to you a book by a man called Andrew Murray. All right? And he has written a book. These days they've combined his books into big ones. But he's written, I think, probably the best book ever written on humility. You know? And in this book, he explains that uh, Christ, you know, was so humble. Are you there? So humble. And throughout, list certain scriptures, which I have, I have knew, but I have not seen them in that way. Where Christ always de- described himself and what he did as nothing or not. I am not come in my own name. I have, the word that I speak are not my words. The doctrine that I say is not my doctrine. I do only what my father says. I am, I am nothing. I am not. Not he. He gave a, about 20 verses in the Bible where Jesus described himself and used those two words, not and nothing. It is amazing. And he was explaining about the humility of Christ. How he was able to define himself as not. He said, the words that I speak, they are not mine. Many pastors, when they are preaching words which are from some somewhere else, it's a problem for them to say that the words that I've said, they are not mine. <laughs> the doctrine, because it's like, as you share the words, and the words are wild. Do you understand? It, it makes you look greater and greater. Then it's like you have to deflate the whole thing by telling them that, actually, the words that I'm sharing, they are not my words. It is, it is Andrew Murray. <laughs> Are you listening? Yeah. I can do, the Son of Man can do nothing on his own. I do what I see my Father do. And then, the amazing thing about this lamp is that his Father's name is written on his forehead. When you see him, you will know his Father. First thing, you will know his Father. And a true follower of Christ. When you see the person, especially the person is a minister, you will know where the person comes from. And you will know his father. If you listen to me preaching, you, you will know certain people. I cannot preach for long without mentioning certain names. Their, their father's name is written in the forehead where it can be seen. But there are people who want to pretend that they are the latest arrival, self-made, self-engineered, without reference to anywhere. I came of myself. And the Lord said unto me, you are just like Elijah the Tishbite. You just came. And, and there was a man called Elisha. That's all. You just arrived. No reference. There must be this humility. One of the things... I don't know why, but that thing seems to be much less. But one of the things that was characteristic of um, Switzerland was the pride. Yeah. That, that, that was here. It, it, it's much... It almost looks as if it's gone. But it was something, I don't know whether there are not a lot of Geneva people here, but it was something that was a lot in Geneva. (laughs) It's gone. Yeah. So much arrogance and pride. Because of WHO or United UNICEF job that you have and you are earning how many thousand francs for a season. It has been given to you. It has been given to you for thousand whatever days. And, and, and you have grown horns because of that. The day God takes it away. Yeah, his, his father's name was written in this. And I yes. It's like this where, I, this where I learned this from. This is my father. This is my father. His words. His vision. He saw it. I do what he says. It's not my own. It should never be a problem for you. As soon as it's a problem for you, there is a big problem that is growing somewhere. <laughs> yes. 
And I'm not telling you something that is not me. You listen to me preaching. You can't listen to me preaching for long without hearing certain names. Yes. Is it not true? Yeah. You hear me? Because I didn't just come from nowhere. I came from somewhere. And several people together, God has used them to mold me into what I am. If I am anything at all. May God have mercy on my soul. So help me God. Everybody say, so help me God. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, become humble. One thing Andrew Murray said is that humility suits you. you see, it's more suitable for you because you are nothing. So, it is suitable. <laughs> yes. It's very unsuitable for you to be proud. It's unsuitable. Somebody who does not know the day that you will die, and somebody who can die by tomorrow evening, you'll be in the fridge. It's unsuitable for you to be proud. And he defined humility with two words. Nothingness and dependence. He said these are the two marks. You are nothing. And you depend on God and on your father and on things. You are nothing and you depend. And that is how I am. I am actually, I am actually nothing. Amen. Are you there? Are you there? Yes. What are you? Nothing. nothing. You're nothing. So don't be too big. Cool down. You see, women, when they are not married, they have more pride. <laughs> but if you see a married woman, usually you see that they are calmer. Because they have seen some higher power that has brought them down to it. STP. But when they are not married, they've never been married, see them. After you have been married. Even by the time you go to the hospital a few times. And they make you into an animal a few times. You are lucky that nobody is videoing that place to come and show us. You now, you just become very cool. You just work out humbly like that. <laughs> By the grace of God, I'm not. Because that will show you that you are nothing. And when you go to the mortuary, and you see, one day one of our church members died. And I went to the mortuary. Because I didn't know why this person was, was, was ill. And what the person was dying from. It's just background music. <laughs> I didn't know what I didn't know what the person was dying from. When I came to your church, you were not playing instrumentalists behind, so I decided to bring my own. <laughs> Are you there? So when I look at the person lying there, you see what happened was that I went with one of our doctors was there. She was I mean she had come also to see to find out. Because the person is alive, you can't see why the person is dying. So when we got to the Place. I said, where is she, that lady? Where is she? A young person. He said, oh, here. That is her, sir. Where? Somebody who was sitting on British Airway a few days before, drinking tea. <laughs> would you coffee? Would you like tea, tea or coffee, please? Tea or coffee? Tea or coffee? <laughs> she was lying there. So I said, where? And she said, this one. There were several. And when you are dead, eh? At least in Ghana, on the stretcher, you don't sleep on one stretcher alone. You, you are two. Your head is here, your legs are here. And where your, le- where your legs are, somebody's head is there and then his legs are here. So pray that his leg does not go into your mouth. <laughs> and then to twist your mouth. And then. So I said, where? Then she said, oh, this one, this is her. So she came, she was, she said, they said, oh, let me wear glass because you cannot see. They have removed you see, they, they have removed the face like this and cut open the head and she was lying there. So, oh, this is, this. so she put on the glass inside like that. Then she put the face back. When she put the face, I said, ah, this is her. I said, my God, she has become nothing. Not, but it is not a new thing. She has always been nothing. Uh-huh. I see, in this life, you think you are something. But if ever God helps you to see the reality that you are actually nothing, then His God is being kind to you so that you can be humble and 
come to God humbly rather than wanting yourself as you are something when actually the reality, the total picture about you is that you are nothing. One of our pastors died and they went to call the ambulance to come for his body. When the ambulance came, we said, where is the ambulance? Oh, this pickup is the ambulance. You know, Toyota pickup, the open back. So they came and they carried him and they put him at the back. And we said, what, what are you doing? Do you know what the driver said? It was in the night about 3 a.m. He said, this is why I don't quarrel with anybody. <laughs> this is why I don't quarrel with anybody. <laughs> yes, when you realize how much of nothing you are. Because you see, pride, quarreling is a manifestation of pride. And criticism is one of the ultimate manifestations of pride. Because when you criticize me, you see yourself as big enough to comment about me. If you were not proud, you would never criticize me. How can you criticize Benny Hinn? When you stand on a corner street and you wave even banners and whatever, nobody will come and listen to you. But Benny Hinn, when he lands in any town with his foot like this, the whole city will gather to listen to him. And you are opening your mouth to comment about him, to speak about him. You are not afraid. God told Miriam, were you not afraid to speak about Moses? Seeing that I speak to him directly. Were you not afraid? You should have been afraid. So you should be afraid. When the apocalypse happens and you see, you will see a humble person, not an arrogant, proud. Look at him. And there was a lot of that in Geneva. Criticize. Talk about this. Criticize pastors. Criticize churches. Speak against this. Speak against that. Look at this guy. And also in Zurich. <laughs> listen 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 there are places that I went to in this town Zurich when I finished witnessing and I walked out of the house the man would tell his wife this man is looking for money that's why he came to witness to us about Jesus Christ Charlie is it not true Criticizing you, criticizing me. Has God used you to start a church with ten members before? <laughs> be careful. Be careful. Just be careful. You are nothing. I am nothing. That's why I also don't have to comment about you. We are all nothing. And we depend on one another and on God. And that should keep us cool. I need you. I need you to I need you to help the ministry. Yeah. And you also need me. One one draw. I can preach and say whatever, but if you also don't help, and you also don't help to finance what I'm doing, I can't do. You too, be there. If I remove, you see, one pastor said to his place, said, I have removed my covering from you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I've removed my covering from you. <laughs> yeah. This one was not the guy who said it all. He's I've been in the church for many years and he was doing certain things. He said, I've removed my cap. So he was, he was in our church. He was just talking to a pastor and I was listening. He said, well, the things that began to happen to me. He said, my child went, had accident. My child went into a coma. All my money. Eight, the child was in a coma for two weeks. Eight, he said, by the time this whole thing was over, I was listening. When he said, he said, you, I've removed my covering from you. He said, hey. So, bri- brightest. <laughs> <laughs> you may not know that you are under a covering and that you are being blessed. So, like Hebrews 11 says, that they without us may not be made perfect. I cannot be made perfect without you. You cannot also be made perfect without me. I can be called by God and see thousand visions, but I will need to come and ask you, please help me do the work of God. The pastor will ask you help. And he can say so many things, but at the end of the day, he will say, help. Otherwise, the thing can't work. Easy. So it has made me into nothing. It has made you into that. But it has to be revealed to you. That's why that when you are successful, God will send a sinyazo so that it will pepper you quietly. <laughs> when the success happens, then he will make you cry in the house. And you cry and you will not remember that you are successful. The people will tell you and you say, eh, am I successful? I never knew that I was successful. Because I'm, I'm always sad in the house. <laughs> Amen. A lamb. Everybody say a lamb. When we come to your house, what will we see? A lamb? Is this church full of lambs? 
Is it chest full of lambs? Becoming lambs. It is only in Europe that when you are preaching, they stand up and walk out. You see, let me tell you something. When you walk away, when you walk out, it's, it's an ultimate statement. You see, people think that when you do something, it is not, you have not said anything. There is more communication without words than with words. When you get up, if I'm preaching, you get up and you take your thing, walk out. You are saying nonsense, rubbish. I don't have time to listen to this any longer. I'm, getting, I'm, I'm walking out. That's all, that's all that it means. And it's the, it only happens in Europe and America. And it's usually white people who do that. It's true. They just get up and they just walk out. You see. Even distances have been, I've seen some of them doing that. At the very beginning when I started preaching. It's only here that this kind of thing. It's the arrogance. That's why somebody said, I'll kick God where it hurts. <laughs> it's only in Europe that you hear this. But in, in Africa, the most biggest thief in prison, you say, may God help me. May God save me. May God help me. God, save me. God should help me. <laughs> Pray for me, Pastor. Pray for me to prosper. Pray for my enemies to die. Pray. Pray for me. <laughs> so humble your, humble yourself by the side of the Lord and He will lift you up. Humble yourself by the side of the Lord, and He will lift you up. 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 Humble yourself by the side of the Lord, and He will lift you up. A lamb. A lamb is nothing. A lamb is in a group. Usually, lambs. But a snake is alone. <laughs> it's true. It is Geneva. When I was preaching, I said, Everybody lift your hand. Okay, you may sit down. And one person got to say, Are we in kindergarten? Lift your hand. Put your hand down. Stand up. Sit down. Stand up. Are we in kindergarten? It's only in Geneva. That such a comment can be made by somebody sitting in church. The spirit of Satan and pride and arrogance. I've never heard anything like that in all my life. It's only in Geneva that I can hear something like this. When I say, lift your hand, I know they've gone. I mean, how does it even occur to you? Okay, shall we lift up our hands as we worship the Lord? And then, okay, you may take your seat. Okay, please stand now. I mean, normal church service. And then you, you sit there and you say, Are we in kindergarten? Are we children? Stand up, sit down, lift your hand, sit down, stand up, sit down. Huh? What type of people are these? So withered and so wild in their nature. Spiritually desolate. Are you a lamb? It's only lambs who can follow a shepherd. Snakes cannot follow a shepherd. Have you seen 17 snakes following a shepherd before? You, you never see snakes in groups. One. And then you see the sheep always is the group. How come you don't want to be part of a group? And they say everybody should come back. Me, I'll come tomorrow. Because, because you never want to do what is a group. It's like this guy can't tell me what. He can't order my life around. It's like something rises up in you. I mean, as soon as you hear a command. My, my book, Loyalty and Disloyalty, some publishers wanted to publish it. and They were, they were trying to change it. I said, you know something? This is what I've written. This is how I wrote it. Don't try to. I said, at the beginning of the book, I had written something about, uh, I called a meeting and I told the pastor that I've sacked you. They said, I, they, they changed it to, uh, I called a meeting and I consulted with the elders. And the elders agreed. And after they agreed, I said, I didn't call elders and I didn't consult with them. You are now trying to change the thing to a lie. I called a meeting and I sacked the guy. If you don't like the book, give me my book. <laughs> it's like when we say, Ben like this. It's like, oh, why? I'm not a child. You see, hi. High and lifted up. When you see the harvest, he said there will be wheat and tears. Read any dictionary or anything that gives you the, 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 the illustration of what wheat and tears are. 
Which, when they harvest, and Jesus said, leave them too, the wheat and the ten. When harvest, and you see clearly. The difference is the wheat bend over there in maturity. And the tears straight up, like that. Straight up high. And the wheat, they bend over with the fruits. Because when you bear fruit, you become more humble. Because you suffered to bear the fruit. But then the tears, they just up like that, straight. Arrogance. The arrogance and the pride. Read any literature about wheat and tears, and you will see it. The test never. I stand up to you. And Pastor said to me, You are not always right. I said, It's true, I'm not always right. The, the, those, those who stand up, I challenge you. It's the arrogance. I'm, I'm as good as you. It was, a, it was an elderly lady many years ago in the canteen when we started our church. One pastor left us and he went nearby and started a church. It was an elderly lady in the church who said to me, A lady who's almost 80 years old, she said to me, What it means. But I didn't say anything. She said, he said, there is, she said, there's something about it. He says, it's a statement. And I was listening to her say, it means I'm as good as you. Yeah. I, like, I placed myself as an alternative to you. I was just listening to her. I'm as good as you are. So brothers and sisters, humble yourself. Be nothing. I am always humbling myself more. Trying. God, the more I think I'm something, I'm deceived. Yeah. One has to be very careful these days. Yeah. That's why these days I'm more into confession of sins. Yeah. Recently, I had a meeting with uh, some of my team that I work with. I said, we are going to confess our sins. <laughs> <laughs> not, not only our sins, but our weaknesses. So I said, first person should come. You kneel down here. In the middle, we are all there. So you kneel down and confess. You are allowed only three sins. You can't have more than three. Only three. <laughs> So the first person will kneel down like that. And then whatever you say, we who are gathered around will say is true. We agree. You are this. If whatever you say. So I think that I'm proud that everybody will say is true. <laughs> we agree. You are proud. Then we all get up and lay hands on the person's head and pray for the person. Yeah. These are the top people that are working in the church. And myself also. Kneel down. First, my weaknesses and my sins. Everybody lay hands on me. It's true. When I, when I study it, it's true. We agree. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it was one of the best things that we did. We are getting healed of arrogance. Because sometimes when you work for God, after a while you think that you are... And one person knelt down and said, she said, I feel that I'm good. And then we all said, it's true. <laughs> you feel that you are good. <laughs> Which is one of the worst things, is to feel that you are good. It's one of the worst things you can ever have. Do you see? Because when you feel that you are good, you are like the guy who went to pray. And said, Lord, I fast three times. I pay my tithe. If I had members like that who fast three times and pay their tithe and, and go to the synagogue regularly, I would be so happy with such members. And then the other guy can say, have mercy on me, I am a sinner. And Jesus said, which of these do you think went away justified? The guy who said, I am a sinner. So we are encouraging more humility, more lamb-like features. Not arrogant tests. We stand up. I will challenge you to your face. I will challenge you in public. I will challenge you in private. I will challenge you one way or the other. Forgive. Forgive. Alright. So that's Apocalyptic 14. But there's a very powerful something in verse 15. I think verse 13, we all know it. Blood are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. And their works, you follow them. Amen. When you die, you're going to rest. How many of you ate some food during the break time? You had some food to eat. You see some people eat like they've got a long time. Some people eat like they've got a short time. Yeah. The work of God is done by two groups. Those who feel they have a short time. And those who feel they have a long time. Rest from your labors. Or your, but your works will follow you. We'll come back to that. But now I want us to see there is a very scary revelation in verse 15. The temple crying. Are you there? 
Another angel came out of the temple crying, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in the sickle. Amen. And the earth, and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, also having a sharp sickle, and crying. Verse 18. Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters, the vine of the earth. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and cast it into the winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Amen. Now notice this, these two things. Two angels one after the other. One was asked to harvest the earth for souls. After that, the other was asked to harvest the wrath of God. And that is a pattern. God allows a harvest spiritually, followed by destruction. And the blood that came was up to when a horse, the horse's mouth, where the bridle is, for thousands of miles, that was the amount of blood that had filled the earth. And that came after a great harvest evangelistically. This is one of the reasons why we must work with urgency. Because some of the places where we can preach. We are preaching because the angel has been asked to harvest souls. But soon another angel will be sent. And this time it will not be harvesting of souls, but harvesting of blood. That's why I say to those in Ghana who are enjoying peace. Look. There is a pattern. If you look at even Liberia. Liberia is a country where God has now unleashed judgment. We hope that it is over now. But as at, as at now, I mean, they've just had elections. Look, it came around in, uh, I think, how many, 16 years ago. 1980, I think it was. Or something like that, or 89. Or, yeah, some, 89. Yeah, 1990. So that's 16 years. I remember I was just married. And I've been married for 16, I've been married for 17 years this year. Yeah. I used to say I've been married for 3 years. I used to say I've been married for 4 years. I've been married for, five, no, I've been married for 17 years. Yeah. Which country in West Africa had evangelism? Liberia. Which country? Liberia. Radio Elwa. Where, where, Jimmy Swaggart, where, when he used to be one of the top evangelists in the world, which country did he go to preach? Not to Ghana. It's, it's, it's Liberia. That is where the American connection was. They had, even all these sergeants doing all these rebels, they all say they are Baptists. Charles Taylor. They all say they are Baptists, they are deacons, they are whatever. It is a pattern. Salvation followed by destruction. The angel that brought the salvation, after another angel was called, this time you are reaping blood. Save F. So, for me, you know, as I'm working, I'm working with a certain agency. It is possible that one day, where we think God has given us access to preach, that place may close up. Because another kind of angel has been sent there. And it is the angelic movements in the atmosphere that cause certain things to happen on this earth. So brothers and sisters, let us become aware of what God is doing and flow. Look at another country, Mobutu's country. Do you have anybody here from Congo? Yeah. Do you know that? The last time I checked the Guinness Book of Records, the fastest, largest growing church in the whole wide world was in Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo. In the Guinness Book of Records. And it was led by a pastor. His name was in the book. Now they don't put the church in the Guinness Book of Records anymore. Not knowing that Congo has also experienced God sending messengers and wild churches growing in that country, <laughs> followed by another type of angel. So those of us who are working, let's work well. Those of us who are supporting, let us support well. Those of us who are pushing, let's push with the mind that they, these patterns are there. Sierra Leone, Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire. The last time I was in Cote d'Ivoire, I thought even there was no Christianity there. But as I drove through, they showed me cinema halls, a particular church. It has bought all the cinema halls and they have big, big, big churches. Ah, today, it is shared between rebels and government. 
it has changed. So all that we are doing, you never know. And nobody knows. Those of us who feel safety in Europe, you may be glad that you have a place to come to one day. <laughs> you never know. Oh yes. It looks as stable as whatever. The Bible says they will say peace and safety and suddenly. So as we are working for the Lord, I want us to do it with urgency. Knowing that the kind of angel, you see like Ghana, 75% Christianity. I do crusades. We have safety. I do crusades. Healing Jesus crusade with large tents. We spend thousands of dollars for each crusade. Huh? That we are spending thousands and thousands of dollars per crusade. And my crusades are very cheap. Ranad Bonke, he went somewhere and he would ask, how much is your, how much is your crusade? Because that's $700,000. And one guy gave him the money for, for one of his crusades. Our crusade costs about $10,000 to $15,000 per, per one. Yeah. Crusade is very expensive. And you will never do crusade if you are looking for money. Because there is no money in a crusade. You will not get anything. In fact, these days I don't even take offerings. I let some people take offerings before I come there. Just collecting p- uh, pennies from people. I have people that are partners who finance the crusade before I come there. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the part. First an angel harvests. After the harvest of souls, another angel is said to harvest blood. The wine of the wrath of God. Whatever we are doing, let's do it seriously. Fervently. Because a time will come when it will not be like that anymore. Amen. Are you there? Alright. Chapter 15. Let's read chapter 15. I saw a sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plates. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten victory over the beasts. May you have victory Amen. over the beast Amen. and over his mark Amen. and over the number of his name. Amen. Amen. And stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, glorify thy name, for thou art holy, and all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. Hallelujah. The temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. Amen. And the seven angels came out of the temple having seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever. And the temple was filled with the smoke from the glory of God and from His power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Amen. Amen. Alright. Are you there? Okay. Now, one just quick point is in chapter, verse 5. The temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. Amen. The church... Is a temple of the tabernacle of testimony. It's a place where the word of God must go forth. There must be much testimony for the word of God. Amen. Do you understand? The word of God must be spread. It must be printed. It must be multiplied on radio. Multiplied on television. And it must... The te- it's a tabernacle of testimony. Where the, the word of God is spoken... Amen. Amen. Where the word of God is preached. These days we've been having the beamers in the churches. Is that not so? How many have watched some of those videos? DVDs. I mean in church. On, on, on what days do you show them? Different days. You people, where are you from? Have you been watching this group here? Are you, are you with us? And what about you? Have you been watching some of them? Yeah. It takes money to multiply and to make the church a tabernacle of testimony. Amen. And we must work together to make the church a place where the word of God is being pumped. How many are glad that we've been preaching the word? Do you want us to continue? Should we preach more? How many have been watching Revelation channel sometimes? 
How many don't have Revelation channel? You have no Revelation channel. Okay, how about God channel? How many have been watching God channel? How many know that I've been preaching on God channel? Did you know that? How many didn't know? Who, who, what, what was the time? Thursday evening, 9.30. God channel. That's Revelation. What about God channel? Mondays. Monday, 8 o'clock. 8 to 8.30. God channel. Amen. Evening. Yeah, Monday evenings. Mondays and Thursdays. God channel. Alright? Thursdays. Revelation is Thursdays and Tuesdays. Okay. God channel is Monday evening. 8 o'clock. Let us make the church a tabernacle of testimony. Amen. Amen. I, how many want to help me to make the church more of a place where the word of God will go out? How many are ready to do that? Are you sure? Alright. When I was coming here, do you have envelopes here? I need envelopes. Now, I believe that the mark of the beast is set aside. It's okay. The mark of the beast is set aside. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do this tonight and I'll, I'll also try and do it again tomorrow morning. But I want to do it tonight because most of you here are more serious Christians. Amen. Are you serious Christians? Yes. Yeah. I, I believe that God has given me an opportunity. Some things have come up that are going to open the door for me to preach more. Huh? More through the media. Amen. Yeah. More. I want you to know, we preach on the television. I have a television program in Kenya. Uh, we, we, we are just about to pay for another year. Television program in Uganda. We also pay every year. Television program in Zambia. Also pray, pay every year. We have a television program daily in Jamaica. Pay every year. We have a television program in Europe. God Channel and Revelation Channel, which we pay in pounds. All these other ones we pay in dollars. We have TV program in Nigeria, in Lagos State, which we pay. Uh, we have a TV program in South Africa, which we pay. Do you understand? All at the same time. And we produce TV programs for all these. Huh? Are you there? Yes. And, and the church is becoming a tabernacle of testimony. For as long as our 1,260 days are running. When it's over, it's over. And maybe something else will come. So, God is also opening a door for us on the radio. But this door is a very special door. But it's very expensive. I don't want to give the details. Because I want it to be real before I give the details. Yeah, at the right time. Amen. But we are going to need a lot of help. Up to the tune of over 500,000, actually over 600,000 US dollars. Amen. But I believe that we are able. How many believe that we are able? Amen. Amen. Can we do it? Yeah. All of us here are how many? Let's say we are 200 or 300 people here. If everybody gives $1,000, it's what? 300,000. And I can sleep easily. <laughs> wow. Everybody say wow. wow. But this one is a very special door that is opening for us. Amen. When it's fully open, I believe you will know about it. Amen. But I want you to help me. Because when I was coming, actually this was not on my mind, but the Lord told me that when I come, I should ask my children. It's just like when I went to America um, last month. I asked them. I said, when I was going to uh, Ghana, my administrator for the Bibles who came to ask me, that, how are we going to pay for these things? I said, when I go to America, I'll ask my children there to pay. Oh, yeah. Because I tell you, our, our, our bills... You cannot have an idea. So when I went to America doing our family service, I said, when I was coming, my administrator, and God has blessed us in America. Fact, we had a Jewish temple, a large Jewish temple in New Jersey. And the whole place was virtually filled. In fact, I was surprised. America. <laughs> I didn't know that we had such a large church there. So when I told them that, the man child, the woman that brought forth the man child is in need of vitamins. <laughs> To bring forth more pastors. The Bible school. I said I'm taking a man child offering. And because I'm going to send it straight to the Bible school account. We have different accounts. Different banks. Do you understand? Straight to the Bible school. Whatever we get. That's what they have to work on. For the next whatever. Then we had a camp like this. 
And my administrator for healing Jesus crusade, we need about $10,000 plus for each crusade. I said, when I go to America, I will ask my children at the camp. But you see, the year before, I had asked, asked everybody to give $1,000. And I told them, maybe I've given an offering of $1,000 before. For the, that was for the healing Jesus crusade. Believe God with me and do it. And it's going to open your womb, financial womb, so that $1,000 giving birth of $1,000 will be very easy. And they gave. And last year they gave um, about 90000 They were able to get about $90,000. That's actually hard. This year when I stood there, I said, do you remember what I said last year? Has it become easier? And I said, now let's give again to support for this year. It is the easiest. We have never seen anything like they were. They were just rushing. We had the one that we could count, there was over $140,000 just at the camp. Just at the camp. And it had become easy. We couldn't even count everything. I mean, just we're just counting the thousands. <laughs> the spiritual hormone elastin had opened their financial wombs and had scraped the mark. The mark has been scraped. And it was much easier. And I asked them, are things not better? So they also said, oh, things are better. Things are better. And I believe. God is going to bless you. So I'm going to ask you to give birth also. Amen. Amen. What do you think? Yeah. Because many of you, you can give to certain things. Yeah. If there is a funeral, you will come. How much is the ticket? You pay. How much is it? This, 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 that. You'll be paying it. If it's this, you pay. If it's that, you pay. If it's that, you pay. But today, I am also coming to ask you, I believe as a servant of the Lord, Help to make the church a tabernacle of testimony. A place where we are preaching constantly. Especially through the media. Not even especially, but this is actually a media offering to support us in the media. Amen. So, I'm going to ask you to get powerfully. How many things that Switzerland can do that? Or the hands are becoming fewer. The claps were louder and the hands were more. But now, the hands are dropping and the claps are less. Yeah. But that is the feature, that is a characteristic of people who have not learned to release. Yeah. So I want to challenge you. Nigerians, you are the best givers. You give more than Ghanaians. Give. Oh, it's true. And so God will use Nigerians to do certain things. The people who have been a great blessing. In the ministry, many of them are Nigerians. I'm talking about Lighthouse. Oh, yeah. I have some, I have some, when I'm going to do fundraising, I've not seen a Ghanaian do that before. Oh, this is a Ghanaian, but he has lived in Nigeria for a long time. He said, anytime I'm going for fundraising, you can ask Prince, call me. And when we don't tell him, he gets annoyed. He said, if you are going to your, these your small, small branches, you are going to raise funds for roofing for the churches, call me. And most pastor, pastor, you'll be happy when somebody like that is there. But he is now saying, make sure. You call me. And he comes with his checkbook. When I do the final, then he writes check. 30 million cities. He goes. You give. 5,000. When Benny Hill was coming, he paid for most of, most of the things. He was just paying for everything. You know, Benny Hill almost came to us. Yeah. We are hoping to have him later. He was just paying for that. And God is blessed. When he was telling me the blessings that God is. Yeah. So, brightest. <laughs> the tabernacle of testimony. Amen. Amen. Believe that God is going to use you. To do that. So Swiss members. I want to ask you to give a one time offering. I, I mean amongst other offerings. We are going to give. I want to give a one time offering. To help the media. Radio preaching. And TV. One thousand dollars. Wow. Wow. <sighs> How many believe you can do it? Only four hands. More than four. Yeah. I want to believe God. This is, this is not your tithes. This is not anything. This is not offering. This is just, I feel that I should do it. And I want you to prove that you are real children. Amen. amen. As you are clapping, you understand? And you are saying amen. It's just a chance. To, no, it's not a mortgage. It's not something that you must pay over 20 years or 5 years or something like that. You know? But it's something that I want you to go and bring. Amen. And you are going to give it special. Everything is special. This year, the people gave for the Healing Jesus Crusade, I told you, about 140,000, that's what we could count, Americans. They were not more than the people that are here. 
if they were fighting, they were less. Amen. Because they were moved last year and this year there. I mean, in fact, the, the fan raising, I forgot I was praising fan, but I began to lay hands. So after a point, they told me, oh, you are still, uh, you are still giving envelopes, so give the people. Because I forgot what I was doing. Because it was not like even fundraising. It's not like what I'm doing. Now I feel that I'm doing fundraising. And I have to talk, 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 talk. Forgive. How much is $1,000 in your money? 1290 Oh, okay. Amen. How much do you think we should get from here? Can we get 300000 Is it possible to start today? Amen. This is not for an orphanage. It's not for an orphanage. It will never go to orphanage. It's not for a hospital. It's not for the church. I mean buildings. It's not to pay salaries. It's for media. It's specific. And that's what it will be used for. Amen. What do you think? Is it a good idea? Our church is very, 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 very big. I can tell you. And the things we do are many. When you give, it must be specific. It goes to that. We, we have bank accounts, about 25 banks. Different, different, different banks. Because in Ghana now, we have a lot of banks. Different, different banks. We have new Nigerian banks that have come. And we have bank accounts in all these banks. Oh, why are you laughing? <laughs> are, are you a manager of one of the banks? <laughs> Amen. All right. Give me some oil. Uh, brightest, let God touch you to do it. Amen. Amen. Don't let's talk much about it. Just give it. Release it. Try it. And let's see. Yeah. I shall give you. I'm going to put some oil on my envelope. I believe God is going to bless you. Some people say, why do you put oil on envelopes? Is it magic? No. I don't want you to use it to post a letter. <laughs> because one envelope also costs money. <laughs> But apart from that, I believe that is an anointed offering that you are going to give. And God will cause an anointing to come into your life. In Jesus', in Jesus name. Amen. So I want to believe God for 300 people. To believe God to suddenly release 1,000. Maybe you have not done some before. But this is the beginning. One day I was thinking to myself, I have not given somebody a car before. The Lord should help me to give a car. And I gave a car. And since then, giving a car is not difficult. Yeah. Because once your womb opens, like my wife, she, I said she was giving Do you know that we couldn't reach the hospital? When we were going, I realized that, look, this thing, eh, the next thousand dollars is going to come so quickly. So I had to divert from the hospital to the doctor's house. When we got to the doctor's house, fortunately, the doctor had a small place in his garage that he had converted into a type of clinic. We ha- he had to put on glass. I also put on glass. Pack, one, two, three. The baby that was out already. So we finished. Pack her back into the car. Let's go to the hospital. <laughs> it was as easy as ABC. And that is how your second 1,000. When you see my face again, remember. That is how your second 1,000 will be as easy as ABC. Amen. All right. Where, where's my oil? Uh-huh. Just, uh, okay, pour some oil. I'm so excited tonight. Are you ex- as excited as me? Okay, 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 okay. Father, bless their works. Sami says I should always use him as an example. Isn't it, Sami? Yeah. I like Sami very much. He's a great guy. I should use him as an <laughs> 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 These are not 300 emperors, but I believe. That's my aim. My aim is half. Half of the thing. I'll be, I'll be a very happy man to stand here to tell you. To people who are following me and were watching all the things I was doing. They asked me, are you not under a lot of stress? The things you are doing. I said, I'm under a lot of stress. That's why people who give me stress, I, el- I eliminate them very quickly. But I can't add more stresses to my life. Yeah. Where, where's the oil? It's not magical. It's so that you don't use it to post. Because when you count the cost of them, it's very expensive. Alright, God bless you. Thank you. Now, the way it is, you can't post a letter. <laughs> when I went to church, I got a free envelope. You didn't get the envelope. It's not a free envelope. <laughs> Father, the tabernacle of testimony. A place where your word is proclaimed over and over and over and over. Let it be so. All over the world, let this gospel be preached. Now that it's time for gospel preaching. We thank you in Jesus' name. 
Amen.